Hey everyone, Boone here. Welcome back to another episode of Tuesday Tools. For this week, I'm looking at a really cool script for Adobe After Effects called Fox Reveal. Now, if you've ever worked with trim paths inside of After Effects, that's what this tool was specifically designed to do, to help you really create custom path animations. So this is gonna be a really fun tutorial. I'm gonna be creating this little map animation here. This is the suburban train line that I live on here in Paris, France. I have all the elements already created here. I'm just gonna be using this Fox Reveal script to really bring the animation to life. Now, if you wanna purchase a copy of this script, please follow my link in the video description. If you'd like to follow along with the tutorial, you can download my project file. The project file has all the elements you'll see here just before I applied any of those animations. So when you pick up Fox Reveal, you'll be able to follow along with this tutorial and do everything I do step by step. All right, I'm inside of my project, and once again, I have no animations currently applied to this project. If I scrub through my three second comp here, there's nothing going on. But let's take a closer look at some of these elements. So I created this train line using the pen tool, and it's just a couple of different basic shapes. You can see down here in the orange labels, these are all the path elements. And I can isolate these to show you. Uh, just quite simple. These I created these with the pen tool. It's a simple stroke element. And the only other thing this really consists of are the station stops, and those are simple ellipses with a stroke applied, a little one pixel black stroke. And then of course I have the, the letters. This is the RRA in Paris. Now essentially what I wanna do here is have the train path animate on screen and reveal the station stops as it animates on. And I wanna have control over how the path animates on, whether I want it to come out from the center or whether I want it to go left to right and branch out in a specific way. So let's open up this Fox Reveal panel and see what we got going on. To do that, I'm gonna to go to Window and select Fox Reveal. Now over here, you can see I have a couple of different sections. I have Add, Reveal, Bake, and Remove. And over here, we have the little Fox logo. If I click on this, this is gonna bring up the Help screen, which um, as I mouse over each particular area, it's gonna give us a quick uh, short summary of what that particular section does. So if you ever get lost or you're ever curious as to what's going on, just open up this help box. Very, very helpful. But I really like the layout of this particular panel. It's quite uh, you know minimal. There's not a lot going on, not a lot of clutter. So the first thing I need to do is add a source. Now a source is gonna tell our path where it's going to animate from. So I'm gonna click the add button and there's an add source button here. I'm gonna click on that. That's gonna add this Fox Reveal point layer to my comp and you can see the point right here in the comp panel. Now I can click on this and drag it around and once again, if once I start animating, this is gonna control where the animation occurs from, the source. And now with the source in place, I'm ready to reveal some paths. So I'm gonna go down here and select all four of my path elements and then I'm gonna click on the reveal button up here and right here it says reveal paths. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this Then it's gonna do some computing here and now we can see all the paths have gone away. We can see our stations here. But if I scrub, we can see that now our paths are animating on. We're not animating on exactly how we want them to, but nevertheless, they're animating on, which is very, very cool. And you can see they're animating on from the center. Now, if I go up to the point here, there's actually, I'm gonna go to effect controls. There's actually a radius that I can adjust to how this affects you know, the surrounding elements. And also now there's a trim path slider. And if I open up, press the U key, you can see there's two keyframes here. So it's essentially taking that trim paths from zero to 100. And I can adjust that as well. So now you can see it's just a simple, as simple as two keyframes really. Once I get everything customized, it's just these two keyframes and I can control um, you know, how these animate in and out. So let's close this. And now I'm gonna go back to the Fox Reveal panel and we want this to animate in a little bit differently. So I'm gonna open up the settings and there's a couple of different customization options here. I mainly wanna ch check, well the first thing is I don't want these to come on as separate layers because we have you know these four separate ones you can see. There's four different locations that it's animating on from. I want it to combine it into one shape and I'm gonna switch from first branch to closest branch and I could change the easing, you know, make it um, ease in instead of just this linear animation. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave the rest of those settings there. Now, they don't automatically change as you change these settings. I have to actually go in, reselect all these paths, and reveal paths again. It's gonna do the computing again, and now it has taken effect. And now you can see 
we have this cool animation. So it's animating from the center because that's where our source is. So I'm going to zoom out. Actually, I'm just going to move over. Now I can grab this source. Whoops. I'm going to go up and grab the actual point layer. I can grab this point. Let's say we want it to animate left to right from this top line. I'm going to move this up here so that it's going to affect this particular line first. So it'll it'll hit this first and then branch down accordingly. So now I'm going to go back and once again select all my layers and reveal paths again. It's going to compute and now it's going to animate from our new source. Well, let's real quickly. Now I still have the problem of these stations being visible. So I want these to animate on as the path animates on. So first let me just, I'm going to have this animate on from the center. So I'm going to move this back over here. And anytime I move this, I need to do a new reveal paths. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select all these again, all the paths and click on reveal paths. And let's just make sure that's animating the way I want. Okay, that's looking good. So now the way we can animate these with the path is first we need to add some animations um, in general. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a scale up. So I'm just going to grab one here. I'm going to hit the S button. And we'll do this um, a duration of 11 frames. So I'm going to go 11 frames here. And it's kind of irrelevant where you're positioning it. Because once you do the animation triggers, it's automatically going to add an expression. So wherever you've animated these on is kind of irrelevant. So I'm just going to do it at the beginning of the comp here. So I'm going to add the in scale position. And it's going to go from 0. And I'm going to add a little bit of a speed ramp here. And then we'll go ahead and copy these. And then I'm, gonna, I'm going to apply it to all of the stations. There we go. So now you can see they're all animating on. Now I'm going to go back up, close this. Now I'm going to select all of these positions and I'm going to hit trigger animations. And then after some computing, those will automatically trigger with the path. Now let's have a look at our animation. Very cool. You can see as I scrub here slowly that these, um, these are scaling up as the path comes along here. Super cool. Now I'm not sure if I go and I change the speed. So let's go up here to my actual path animation. Let's add a speed ramp to it. And I'm not sure if the animation triggers um, will move along with it. It looks like they do. Look, as I'm adjusting the speed ramp, those will automatically adjust. That is very cool. And even if I move, if I extend these out, yeah, same deal. Wow, that's really impressive. All right, now I'm going to go to another animation here. This is a close-up of um, part of the line. So here we have labels. And for this one, I want these labels to animate on. I want to trigger these to animate on as well as the stations. So once again, there's no animation going on here. So I need to go through the process again. I'm going to add a source. I want the source to animate from over here. Um, I'm going to go down to my paths. And I'm going to reveal those paths. And it looks like I've already got the settings in place. Yeah, these settings are good to go. OK, so that path is animating on over the course of one second. Maybe we can do two. OK, so that's animating on. Now, I think I have the layers hidden. So let me you know, unhide these. OK, here's all my text. So what I want to do here is I want I want to have the same, I want to have the scale up on the points. So I'm going to go ahead and scale these up. 11-ish um, 11, 11 frames. Here we go. Scale from 0. Once again, add a little bit of a speed ramp here. And now I can go ahead and copy this. Paste it on all of these. OK, that's good. Let's see here. OK, those are animating on. Now let's go to the text. And let's add, let's just say it'll fade in. So I'm going to hit the T key for opacity. We'll have it fade in uh, maybe eight frames. I don't know. So I'm going to copy this. Then I'm going to paste it on all the other text elements. 
Okay, so all of my animation is there. Now I just need to trigger it with the path. So to do that, once again, simple. I'm just going to select all the station points as well as the text elements. And then I'm going to hit trigger animations and we're going to see if this hopefully will work smoothly. Wow, that is so damn cool. Okay, now let's say we want to animate it back out. Let's see if it can be as simple as copy, uh, paste, keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes. Let's see if this works. Okay, it looks like it's triggering it, but they're a little offset. You can see here, let's just watch the animation. Animates on just fine. All the elements are triggered, the labels, but when it animates out, they're triggered, but the timing is off. So what we can do here is we can manually adjust that. And one way we can do that is by baking those keyframes in. So right now, if I look at this, these are actually expressions. So if I go over, let's go to a point here. Let's open up that scale property and you can see there's an expression applied. So it's, um, you know, we need to bake that in, make those keyframes. So the way we're going to do that is we go to bake. Let's go over and let's just do the points first. I'm going to select all the points. We're going to bake those in. Okay, there we go. Something's going on now. There we go. Okay, actually, let me full screen this. I'm going to press the U key. Okay, so now we have our animations in here, and you can see the animations out. So now I can retime this. So I'm going to just grab all these and retime this, come in a bit earlier or go out a bit earlier so that as the trim path goes out, um, these will stay with it. There we go. Um, it's still looking like it. it's a little off. Bring it back here. So you see, if I want to fine tune it, I can just bake these in. Okay, cool. Very cool. Okay, those are good to go. I'm going to close these up now. We're going to do the same thing. Uh, with the text. I'm going to grab all these text elements, um, bake the triggers, and it's computing. Okay, now let's open this up full screen again. I'm going to hit the U key to bring up those keyframes. Grab these keyframes, and let's bring up the keyframes of this last one here so we have a reference. Um, then maybe just bring those in here. Okay, now let's see how it looks. Now I can obviously finesse some of these animations if I want to add some more ease, take away the ease, speed it up, slow it down. But as you can see with the baking, I can, you know, perfectly time those in. And that's much faster than if I wanted to manually go in here and add trim paths and keyframe those. Um, so it's very, very cool. In fact, let me just show you what's going on. I didn't show you on the actual path, if we look at the path here and we go to the shape, you can see there's a path element here with the fox reveal. So if I open that up, here's where our expressions are for the start and end position. That's where the secret sauce is. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. This one was super fun to make. I love making maps. Once again, if you want to pick up a copy of this, follow the link in the video description. If you want to download my project file, follow the other link in the video description. If you liked the tutorial, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.